Hi there. So this is going to be the first in a series of uh, little quick tips on extracting some useful ideas from a piece of uh, really great film music. In this case, it's the um, main theme from Basic Instinct by Jerry Goldsmith, which I absolutely love. It's always been one of my favorite pieces of film music. And I think it's got a couple of really clever ideas in. So we're just going to look at the first eight bars. Um, I've popped it into Logic, um, so I'll just play it down first of all, and then we'll go in and I'll give you three um, things which I've taken from this, which I think are really good and useful tips when writing your own music. So here's what it sounds like. Okay, so the first thing that really caught my ear when I first heard this was this really interesting kind of bouncing rhythmic thing. And I've, um, I've got here a, a part of the score, um, which was years and years ago, I went on S Stephen Scott Smalley's incredible orchestration class. Um, so if you've got the opportunity to do that, I highly, highly recommend it. Um, so I've, I've got uh, the, the first page of this um, score here, and I can see... Um, I can see what's going on with the inner writing of the string parts and the harp, which is really useful. But what I'm trying to work out um, by listening to the original soundtrack was what is actually going on in that um, interesting kind of xylophone thing. And what's happening is you've got two different sounds. You've got this uh, first part. So if I just solo this. So you'll hear then, if you listen to the soundtrack, you'll hear that it's just that last um, note which is missing from making this just a continuous thing. And I don't know whether um, whether they, on the original score recording and production, whether they actually used a delay line which had a specific number of delays set into it. One thing which I have noticed is that it drifts slightly out of time on the original. So maybe it's a delay line that's just set to do a certain number of repeats and then stop. Um, I haven't bothered to try and recreate that um, slightly drifting time, but it does give it a nice extra quality in that it drifts slightly out of time towards the end. Um, but you've got two elements of, of the sound here. So there's this, um, I've put a bit of an EQ over this um, just to take a little bit of the top end off and to boost um, that kind of roundabout sort of 500 uh, hertz um, just with a wide, I don't want it to sound too kind of nasal, um, but I've just put a nice kind of boost there to give you that kind of real woody sound to things. I've also put on a reverb, which I'll show you in here. So you can see that this is sending to channel 31. And up here, I've got the Lexicon Vintage Plate. Uh, I've got quite a dark preset dialed up. And then I've timed the pre-delay to give me a roughly a kind of double time feel so that, um, so that the sound kind of comes in if you listen to just one of them. You can hear it's almost like a kind of bounce. Um, you're getting that, uh, and, and I'm doing that really with the pre-delay there. So that's how I've got that sound. But there is another element to this kind of rhythmic part here, which is that on the other side, so that's on the right-hand side, on the other side, on the left, you've got this kind of metallic thing that is doing a very similar thing, but it's just, um, it's one sixteenth later. So let's have a look at this part, and I'll solo this now. And you can hear there, it's got the same kind of pattern in that it's got a little bit missing at the end. In fact, it's got two missing notes at the end, um, which I think is listening to the soundtrack is, is accurate. Now, what I've used here is an unpitched metal sound. Uh, it's just a, a, actually a little bit of an anvil. Um, I've done something to it, though. It had quite a lot of ring in the sound. If I just turn off the channel EQ and the filter there. You can hear that it's got uh, a definite note in there. So what I've done is I've I've used the Logic Channel EQ just to 
just to notch out some of the actual uh, pitches that were coming through there. So if we look at that again, you can see, especially if I play, you can see that, that I've got rid of a certain number of the, of the kind of tonal elements to that sound. Um, I'm using quite a severe high cut there as well, just to kind of put it right in the background. And I'm using this low pass filter, which has a little bit of a peak here as well. So if I just play that sound down here, and that also helps to give the sound um, a little bit of a kind of muffled feel, but also a little bit of um, of a kind of peak just just in that mid range uh, area. That's also going exactly the same way. It's going to the same uh, plate reverb, which has got that pre delay on. So that's the that's the percussive element. So together they sound like this. So that's the first tip is to take something um, which is could be incredibly boring and dull and actually with a little bit of production, a little bit of kind of creativity to turn it into a really interesting part that keeps your attention and something uh, really fascinating happening on both sides. So what else is going on here? Well, we've got um, a really clever way of kind of getting a real kind of movement into the into the track. And that is done via um, the violas and the harp. I think also there's something I can hear in the soundtrack which isn't written in the score, which is that the bassoon seems to be doubling the harp as well. So here I'm using the harp, and if we just listen to that on its own. And with the bassoon. So if we just have a quick look at the strings. So in the bottom end, we've got these uh, pizzicato uh, chords happening. Uh, they're quite close voiced, um, but they sound like this. Now you can hear one of the things that's going on here is that I've got um, my TC6000 with a large warm hall setting over um, quite a lot of these sounds just to just to give it that kind of beautiful bloom which um, which is in the original soundtrack recording and it all helps to give this uh, mysterious sound and to give this kind of um, sensuous feel which you're going to get as well from the from the melody shortly but let's have a quick look here so for the pizzicatos um, because it's a reasonably small sounds like a reasonably small studio band I've gone for the um, Spitfire Studio Strings uh, pizzicatos and I've used two separate sections of three cellos. I'm using the close mics and the outriggers within that sm that's kind of dr quite dry smaller studio in Air One. Um, but also uh, I'm putting those through the TC6000 and then with the uh, basses I am simply using the uh, pits basses from the BBC Symphony Orchestra so it's a bigger section but I kind of get the feeling, I, I like that from the sound of the original soundtrack, it just sounds a lot fatter down there. So I'm putting that in, maybe there's some other kind of synth bass doubling that part as well. But that gives us our kind of bottom end, it gives us our kind of our measured kind of beat. And then if we go to the, uh, the other inside parts with the strings, now, this is one of those things that is always incredibly difficult to mock up, these kind of alternating lines. And here you've got them in contrary motion. You've got the, the top uh, section of the violas coming down and the bottom section of the violas going up. Um, and those all playing together sound like this. So part of the thing here is to get a really nice kind of line to that uh, gradual crescendo and diminuendo in the middle of that section. Um, but what I'm doing here to uh, get to kind of emulate that sound of the live players is I'm using a combination of different things. I'm using the um, legato consort from Spitfire Chamber Strings. If we click on this, I can show you each one in turn. 
I'm using, I'm doubling that with the Longs Consort uh, non legato patch just from the Spitfire Studio strings. And then finally, I'm using the Long Consort from Albion 2. Now, each one of these is adding a certain little element to the sound, which I like. Um, I probably wouldn't go quite so nuts if I wasn't trying to match the sound to the original soundtrack recording. Um, but uh, that seemed to give me a really good combination. And as I say, each one of those different sounds is adding a certain extra element. Um, the, the stuff is all going through the TC6000 as well, which kind of, if you've got really well recorded sounds, then um, gluing them together is actually not the most difficult part of the process. But I'm doubling that um, that whole thing as well here for the uh, B section, for the other half of the violas. Um, and then that, if we look at that all together and maybe add in the harp as well, that sounds like this. So there we go. Now, what else have we got in here? Well, the obvious thing is the uh, flutes up there and the vibes down here. And these are just basically doubling the chords. As you can see, flutes are playing quite low. Um, so here I'm just using uh, the studio woodwinds just again to mix it up a bit and get something that uh, sounds... <laughs> So that's a really, you know, quite a plain sound, but it's basically just filling in that um, that that chordal texture at the back there. And then here for the vibes, I'm just using the uh, vibes from BBC Symphony Orchestra. And here I'm using the close and the outriggers. So I'm going for, uh, I don't I don't want it to be too kind of present. I'm just using a little bit of the close mics and a bit of the outriggers to give me the, a sense of the room. And that sounds like this. And that's just part of the colour there. And again, you've got that musical shape to the line, which is um, always so important to get that. Now, uh, what about the, uh, the real kind of payoff? Um, well, when the clarinets come in um, and then are answered by the violins. So here I'm using the Spitfire Symphonic Woodwinds. Uh, for the clarinets and then for the violins I'm using the uh, Consordino studio strings and they sound like this. So I've done a really quite a drastic EQ to the violins just to really lift the air and take a little bit of the body out of the sound. Um, I've probably gone a little bit over the top, to be honest, uh, because it's not quite as extreme as that in the original soundtrack recording. But it does give you the it gives you the the idea of how you might treat that as well. And if this was all recorded um, in one pass, then. I would probably take that feed from the close mics on the violins and just give them that extra bit of air and then just blend that back in with the overall recording. Um, and that would still give you a really great effect there. So the takeaway from that section, from the clarinets and the violins, apart from the fact it's a, a beautiful, uh, very creative and inventive melody, is just that you can split up your melody um, incredibly drastically like that by having the first half of it played by one instrument or set of instruments and the final half of it played by completely different instruments. And it's just works so incredibly well here, this kind of question and answer thing. So this is an incredibly inventive piece of writing, I think. And just looking at these first few bars, um, there are three things that I can take away from this to kind of inspire me in my own writing. The first of which is the production on this rhythmic percussion part and taking something and and kind of imbuing it with this um, kind of sense of of a kind of rolling uh, you know momentum. I love the fact that secondly, I love the the way that the rhythm in the backing section is is um, 
kind of played out here that you've got these string uh, alternating thirds going on in the violas. You've got the kind of beat, if you like, being uh, carried by the pizzicato um, cellos and basses. You've got the harp and I think the bassoon giving you uh, kind of these spread chords and just kind of flowing up and down. But everything has got this kind of uh, two bar pattern to it, this kind of beautiful rise and then fall. And it's give it's the whole um, feeling of it is just that it's this kind of inhale and exhale. Um, that's the second thing. Really, really love the way that that's been uh, arranged and orchestrated. And the third thing, just taking that kind of sensuous melody um, and beginning it on the clarinets in thirds there and then and then answering with that such a drastic color change from the clarinets to those high, um, very, I'm pretty sure, kind of quite EQ'd uh, violins with that really silky uh, consortina sound. You can really hear the, um, the rosin on the bows there. So let's have one more listen all the way through. <laughs> fantastic and inspiring piece of music there from the great Jerry Goldsmith. Thanks very much for watching. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.